Hello everybody, Floyd here. Welcome back to the asylum. It's a glorious day for a ride on a beautiful old vintage motorcycle. And sitting behind me here is my favorite bike in my collection. It's one of the two oldest. And it's just such a pleasure to ride that I really enjoy it. It's a 1962 Honda Dream 305. Give me a second to take this gear off. And I will grab the camera and we'll walk around it and I'll tell you all about it. As far as I know, this was originally a white motorcycle. I had to find any indication otherwise. It was actually restored and customized years ago by somebody. It now fits into the category of a survivor because it was so long ago. But at one time, this bike had actually been completely restored. And then left to die. I picked it up from a friend of mine. It took me a long time to convince the man to sell it to me. He's a dream collector and he loves them. Oh, he's got several other dreams that are all later models. They're the uh, 63 and a half up dreams to have the uh, tank scene. There are some distinctive features on the early dreams that are different. It's really hard to visualize how many differences there are until you park two of them side by side, which I actually did at a show in Florida a couple of years ago. But it's got some really neat features to it that I love. One of my favorite things about these early Hondas it's a fully enclosed chain guard. The catch being, you have to take care because you don't see it, because it's not obvious. You have to make sure that you perform the chain maintenance because you can't just walk by and look at it. These silencer on it that are on it are your typical aftermarket Thailand eBay silencers. They work okay. They look decent. These are all dinged up. I plan to change them out one day, but truth of the matter is I have way too much fun riding this motorcycle. I mentioned the early model tank with no seam up the center. I'm not even sure what this seat cover is or if it is even, this is even the original seat frame. It doesn't matter. One of the things I did, it was modified to take standard petcock and have one of the little Chinese eBay petcocks on it. I replaced that with a Pingle petcock. Pingle petcocks are expensive, but the quality is absolutely undeniable. Man, I love these old toaster tank, big chrome side panels. Even though I'm a child of the 80s, and that means that my true love is bikes like GSX-Rs and Honda VF750s, I have fallen in love with Dreams ever since riding one a few years ago that belonged to an older gentleman who was a friend of mine. This one has a deep fender, valence. It has the typical damage that you find on the bottom of unrestored ones. I'm not quite sure. I mean, they said they did this jumping curbs and stuff. So I guess it was one of the things that they actually did all back in the uh, 60s with these bikes, which we would never consider doing with them now. I love the headlight here. I actually bought a European style headlight that had replaceable bulbs and converted this one over to LED. The same thing, this is a modern ignition switch. I've rewired it so that it operates with the normal in a normal sequence instead of the old six position switch. Purists can cry, but this bike wasn't factory stock anyway. And I have no intention of ever putting it back that way. Unless it suddenly became worth a billion dollars, which is highly unlikely and I hope not. 
be quite frankly honest with you, excessive valuation of collector motorcycles is driving people away from the sport. People look at these auctions and they see these prices. And they try to sell their junk out of their backyard for outrageous prices. It's got a genuine McCuny carburetor on it. I replaced the original factory key in with this McCuny. It does require some modifications. I don't know if you can see it or not here. The choke lever has to be bent for a genuine McCuny VM22 to fit in here. I tried bending mine without heating it and I broke it and I actually had to weld it back together. But once you get it, then it's up under here and this is the own position and to turn it off, you simply pull it out and up. Pull it out and up. The jetting I'm running on this, this is a VM22 I bought from Ditch Cycle. I'm running a 120 main jet and a number 25 pilot jet. It works really well. I converted the ignition system, not the ignition system, the charging system. It's a single point setup in these. So I actually kept the points because it's easy to set, it's easy to maintain. There's no power advantage to going to an electronic ignition. And in all honesty, with the single point setup, there's no reliability advantage either. I don't care what anybody says. It does have an aftermarket high output ignition coil. And I bought this regulator rectifier unit from 4 in the 1 for like 35 bucks. It works great. I mean, there are a lot of more expensive systems and people that will try to sell you stuff. For example, there's one guy on line who's selling the, uh, he sells a Chai Cuny, a Chinese McCuny carburetor to go on these things. And it's not a bad setup, but it's not the same, not as good to me as a genuine McCuny. Let's get this, see if I can get this cover back in one handed. That may not be perfectly latched, but I'll do that again off camera when I'm finished talking. But that's pretty much this bike in a nutshell. I like the old thing. Everything works. Even though I normally kick start it, the electric starter works. Occasionally it'll grind because it needs new rollers, which I have a set of new rollers in it. Why would I go with the aftermarket regulator rectifier? Well, the battery doesn't die between charges like it does so often with just a, a rectifier. It allows me to run LED bulbs in the headlight and tail light. These bikes didn't come with turn signals from the factory. They weren't required in the United States, so they didn't have them. And I'm not too worried about it for what I do with this thing, which is to put around the countryside or take it to shows or ride it over to cars and coffee. It's just a great fun old thing. And that brings me back to the engine. The Honda 305 engine. And this configuration has a single carburetor. It has a 360 degree firing order. It shakes a little, makes a good sound when it's idling, as you heard a while ago on the riding portion of this video. But this bike has a thoroughly modern feel as long as you're on a relatively smooth road. The old leading link fork with all its bushings and the shock absorbers inside the housing will squeak when it goes up and down. The rear shocks are short and primitive and have barely any travel. It doesn't handle rough roads really well. But on a good, smooth, modern, well-paved road, 
it's still a good comfortable fun vintage motorcycle to ride around on you really can't go wrong with an old dream if you like them Well, that concludes this week's video. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my old dream. Yeah, maybe one day I'll restore it, but right now I'm just happy with it as it is. When I say restore it, I mean repaint it and refurbish it, and I'll put it back to factory stock. I'll keep the bumper and the fender guard. I'll always probably use an aftermarket muffler on it, assuming I could even find a factory muffler for it. I just happen to like the old thing, and it's just good vintage any of the 305 Hondas whether it's the Dream or the Scrambler or the Superhawk it's a vintage motorcycle that you can actually ride and go somewhere on yeah you have to be careful with the old drum brakes and stuff and make sure that you're not in any panic stopping situation but as far as ride quality being able to maintain highway speed whatever they're just fine they're not super fast, but they're not slugs either. So, y'all take care of yourselves. Hope you've enjoyed this one. And I will see you next time. Until then, keep riding, keep wrenching, stay crazy.